Hey everyone, Friendzone here. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'll explain what I consider to be the most interesting part of my upcoming single called Fracture. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how I created different sounds in this uh, specific section of the track. Without further ado, let's start by just listening to the whole thing. So there's that. And uh, now I'll try to explain uh, the bits that come between the bass line, because I think that it, that's the most interesting sound design part. I'll be using quite a few techniques from a producer called Mr. Bill, so shout out to him. Uh, the link to his channel is in the, is in the description. So let's first try to see how I uh, made the first uh, fill. It sounds like this. So I use a technique that uh, Mr. Bill uh, explains in his channel. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is just play a, a, a chord with a, an instrument. So I chose a road, it's a massive preset, and it just sounds like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, make the most out of the artifacts that uh, plugins like Reverb uh, naturally create. So in order to do this, we have to first add maybe like four or five utilities after the other, uh, one after the other, and a limiter to prevent from uh, clipping. Uh, so it will just increase whatever input signal uh, is coming like crazy. Then we'll add the reverb, which I just talked about, and this will make the processing sort of of the reverb and the artifact that it's, uh, that it's using much more evident. So it, just, it will just sound like this. So, so far, nothing too interesting, but if we add a saturator, uh, a wave shaper saturator with uh, some tweaked settings, we can get very interesting uh, distortion that sounds like this. So you can hear it cuts out at the end. And then we have another sound uh, that sounds like this at the tail of the, of the sound. And this one was actually uh, also quite fun to make. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the same road chord, removing maybe just the two bass notes down there. Uh, without all the effects, it just sounds like this. And we are going to add a bit of reverb and some vocoder. And the vocoder will sort of make a, an interesting water-ish feel to it. So if we just tweak the, set, uh, the settings with pitch tracking on, it sounds like this. Sort of granular uh, feel to it. And then I added an auto filter that uh, is automated to sweep down the audio filter, uh, audio uh, spectrum. So you can see the frequency that is automated here. And Ableton's auto filter has this nice uh, feature, like an LFO that makes it go very crazy very easily. It makes the whole sound much more interesting to listen to. And it sounds like this. So you can listen how we actually gain in a lot of complexion and uh, a lot of uh, of details in the sound, and all in all it sounds like this. Uh, I'm directly going to jump to the s uh, third one, because this is another interesting thing that, I uh, that I'm using. It's a plugin called Crystal. Uh, it's a soft, uh, soft synth. It's free as well, so I will link to it in the description. Uh, it's got this very nice feature called the Breed feature, and you can basically breed different patches together. So you can choose a father uh, in all those uh, basic uh, uh, presets. Also add your own presets. Uh, so for example, you can choose some pads and uh, braid it with uh, some wave sequences or some ambient things. You can mutate the child and when you click the breed button, it will create an entire patch for you. The sound itself sounds like this. Now you can hear the, the voice number two here is the actual sound that we can hear, the actual notes. And I really like the, uh, the modulation on the, on the noise afterwards. And this sine wave, the LFO here, that goes completely crazy, 
is what uh, messes around with the delay time. So the different effects are influenced by this LFO down there. And uh, I wanted it to sound a bit, uh, a bit less intense because if I remove the LFO that uh, I will explain afterwards, it just sounds like this. It, it was a bit too intense for me. So what I did, I uh, created a new LFO, uh, a sine wave that modulates uh, the rate of the second LFO that itself modulates the, um, uh, the delay time, etc. So the LFO number six will modulate how fast this LFO is just going crazy. So it goes from very crazy to not so crazy. And this uh, will change the, the sound uh, that we get out of it. And it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. And I really liked the, the sort of vibe that got from it, so I kept it. Now the fourth uh, sound I was working with is this one. So first of all, the sample that I used is just me playing a, an electric guitar. Uh, and what I did uh, here is I messed around with the transient. So I flipped around the sample so that it sounds reversed. And then uh, Ableton's got this warp setting, and if you set it to beat mode and transients, everywhere uh, there is a transient, you can decide the um, with this setting here, you can decide the to what extent the audio should decrease uh, around the end of the transient. So if I leave it to a hundred, there will be no decrease in the audio signal whatsoever, and it will just sound like this. But then if we uh, drop it to, I think it was 66. If we drop it to 66, or perhaps even lower, it depends what we want. Yeah, let's, let's go lower. I think it was lower. Uh, what, what is going to happen is that the sound that goes from this transient to this one is going to decrease gradually. So we'll get something like this. And it sounds very cool to have sort of this exponential uh, gra grains that just messes around with the sample and creates a nice, uh, a nice sort of soundscape. Perhaps the last very interesting sound that is happening in this uh, sequence is uh, this one here. I actually resampled the entire song, uh, so the master track. Here you can see uh, the auto filter is doing the same th thing as we've seen before. Uh, same for the frequency, uh, it sort of swipes around the filter that goes like uh, um, from high to low and from low to high. And this creates a nice uh, effect, if you wish. So depending on the settings you choose, you can automate the auto filter to sound a bit crazy. And uh, on, if I go back on the actual track here, I made this uh, gate to open up and uh, close down in the middle of the of the sample. So first it's on and then it's off. And I just wanted this to sort of give give a little rhythm to the to the audio sample, and it sounds like this. You can see the audio is ducking at some point, and that's what I wanted to get a bit more punch. So basically, that's the those are like the four most interesting uh, sound designed techniques that I used in this track. Make sure you check out the, the single when it comes out, Fracture on YouTube and SoundCloud. Feel free to use this track wherever you like, in a video, in uh, any kind of production that you're making. Just make sure to mention my name somewhere. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you next time.